so many people coming in with their tweets i'm seeing at elijah white is saying he watching think uh, of uh, the show loving it enjoying the show i'm seeing at kirui is saying um i'm watching kibra's finest dan rongo in the house I'm really look, looking forward to uh, this conversation. Uh, I'm seeing a, one more comment here by, uh, this is Kevin and Simon enjoying the discussion. Kip Kirui also saying that, uh, loving the show. I'm seeing here a comment by Karl Marx. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? Uh, no, 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 no. Is it, Anita is so, equally <laughs> more than before. Before he's read. Karl Marx is saying that uh, the reality of the matter <laughs> is that Jubilee is uh, uh, fractured and uh, it ha hasn't observed the rule of uh, uh, at this juncture. Citizens demand a capable and united nation, not factions uh, 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 permanently at war with each other as the current episodes demonstrate the national assembly and senate has 416 members of which 97 members are women representing representing 23 percent the supreme court of kenya at ease with five men and two women that's Honor. the look that's thank 28 percent not two-third cj maraga should dissolve it too Keep tweeting. The hashtag yes. is uh, the stand KE. You agree with what Karl Marx I is saying? I agree there? completely with what Karl Marx is I saying. I see you almost stood up, stood up clapping. Yes. And it's because, I, as I've said again uh, on this show, the stand, I have mm. said if CJ Maraga was genuine, he should have come uh, the previous year, the other year he had more time. But why now when he's, it's about three months to exit? For me, it looks like we. I, I shall revisit. We shall revisit. It seems like... Uh, brothers who are are, okay. are, are settling scores mm -hmm. I, I i don't it see doesn't look like it, doesn't it, it has a good motive yes. for the interest of the kenyans and also dan has said if mm -hmm. it's not this bill it would have been another bill if it's not big so it, for me i'm looking at it like there were other bills and then they were like which one will be the most emotive bill let's go with this one because my question is where was the um, judiciary I, I was yet to see a judiciary advisory when stalemate was at a standstill when monies were not going to counties i never saw a stand still so my, my question is why why this uh, last minute kind of thing why this last minute a uh, kind of thing which would have this thing would have been done way before when were these petitions uh, received we should have seen a timeline of exactly what happened now remember just, just to remind you of what we are discussing this uh, night right here on y254 the cj has advised the president to dissolve parliament what are the implications of this will this text uh, will this uh, advisory take us 10 steps forward or 10 steps backward give us your take the hashtag is good is uh, uh, the stand ke at ramaguko at y254 channel now um even as you continue with this conversation let me uh, head over to what happened today we had uh, discussions that were taking place in regards to uh, this issue where we had the parliamentary service commission uh, saying that they will move to court to challenge this advisory by the cj now the speaker of parliament who is also uh, who is uh, justin muturi said this and i quote the commission regrets that the chief justice appears to be willing even eager to plunge the country into a constitutional crisis without exercising the wisdom and circumspension that is expected of the high office he holds now can the psc in your view challenge this advisory in court and win the speaker says that it it, it was ill-advised premature and unconstitutional yeah. well well i, I think you, um, that that really adds you know salt to the injury because mm -hmm. like 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 i said before that the parliament or the national assembly to be specific had got a timeline you know to converse through two thirds gender bill mm -hmm. of law and it has failed nine attempts and the failure is not really out of technicality. The failure is out of deliberate. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, that, is, that, is, that is within the public domain. Now, Parliamentary Service Commission is a quasi-judicial, you know, committee. Any parliamentary committee is half-judicial committee. So, I would rather have asked J.B. Muturi, in his own wisdom, and his own discretion, that 
before he could have issued such a statement, a very stinging statement directed towards the president of judiciary, I wish that he could have updated the public on and take responsibility as the chair of the Parliamentary Service Commission to that effect mm -hmm. and as the Speaker of the National Assembly to apologize to the nation for the fail attempts that have taken place under his watch. You're saying the, the, the Speaker should apologize to Yes, the before, before you make such a stinging statement and directing towards that vendetta to the, you know, to the President of Judiciary, yet this bill lied nine attempts at the National Assembly which you are watching over. I think, for me, I would rather redirect that but kind of anger, that kind of sting from J.B. Muturi and say that it was unnecessary. But they speak because say that this is not his choice, it is an electoral issue. Which electoral issues? I mean, I mean, you know, we elected leaders, first of all, and I like the fact that Anita said, one of the issues we are, we are electing you is as... Is, is more of representation, but more also in legislation. So failure to thank legislate that, matters in the National Assembly mm -hmm. is an indirect failure, indirect indictment to the people that we elect. Okay, thank you so much, yes. Dan. In the same breath that you mentioned, uh, this bill came nine times in the National Assembly and was not passed. So did the Division of Revenue bill go to Senate nine times and passed on the 10th attempt? Let me, the, the, so, the, there, was a, the, there was a committee that really was willing to converse about it. For the two-thirds gender, there had not been any committee that said, okay, fine, now it has failed nine times. Could we try to have a dialogue? There was a dialogue All right. at okay. the Senate Thank about this. I think that, that makes nothing, it different. There is nothing that had stopped the judiciary from, the same advisory that calls for dissolution of parliament would have said, mm. hey, mm. look, this is how we go about it. Through the executive, let me give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps to go ahead with this. For me, it is very uh, misinformed because the same way the Senate did not pass the Division of Revenue Bill nine times and passed it the ten, uh, tenth time is the same way that the two-thirds gender bill was not passed. Uh, point, point number two, you cannot force people to elect a particular gender or give a particular um, uh, requirement and say hey in order to elect somebody uh, uh, apart from the, the the normal requirements uh, for a member of parliament you need a degree you need this particular number of years uh, blah 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 to continue I mean a gender issue you cannot say because even Anita. when you say you want to interpret RAM mm. you cannot say uh, Starehe constituency we've determined only a woman can be elected no man can can be elected I want you guys today to show me the exact criteria in which we can achieve the two-thirds gender rule. Now, w now the CJ proposes that Parliament be dissolved because of its failure to pass the two-thirds gender rule. The two-thirds gender rule favors women or females, if I'm to put it that way. Mm. You are a woman yes. in leadership, mm. <laughs> yet you oppose You're the rule yes. yeah. by the CJ. Yes. Why? Why, Ram, who told you we want to be given things on a silver platter? Who told you the only position that can be given is a nominated position, not an elected y position? You want to work hard for it. I want to work hard so for it. You, you, you I don't want need to sit the here because to be I don't need it. Women have done it. Masakaru has done it. Charity Ngilu has done it. Anwe Goro has done it. And I can go, Phoebe Asio has done it. And I can go on and on. Since 19, uh, I think, 79, when we had the first woman member of parliament, and these women had balls. These women could shake parliament. So we don't want to be given things on a silver platter. Women too can do it. We've already been given opportunities in terms of education. If you remember, if you want to go to university, there, there are fewer cutoffs for women. In the job market as we sit today, uh, Dan will tell you, women have more advantages. Let us fight for a political space. The same way, why, why is it not that in the corporate world we are told, oh, this specific po it's only implied, it can only be implied that women or men are preferred for this position. But we are saying as young women in politics, we want to go, we want to fight, we want to be as strong as the likes of Martha Karua, who never got anything on a silver platter. Yeah, qu quite interesting, yes, that. Uh, Milio Diambo um, was first elected. Mm. Sorry, First nominated. 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 I, I have no issue with nominated. I have in the, issues in with the, being in given the, in the, in the National straight. Assembly, right? Nomination, no problem. Okay. Election, now, two yes, thirds, problem. Two yes, thirds yes. gender rule mm. provides much of an affirmative to the women who are not able, or not only women, but the disadvantage you are not able to compete fairly and equally 
because we understand the political terrain of this country as it is. That even as much as the terrain, you know, is so rough and is so patriarchal in nature, there are women who've triumphed through, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad she's mentioned some of them. But it could be interesting that the Honorable Martha Karua is for the issue of passing the two thirds gender rule. Why? Because out of her story, she knows the importance of making at least relatively, you know, playing ground for women. Now, you know, this is very interesting, Ram, because why would we, as a country, and people in this funnel, agree mm -hmm. that two thirds gender was, you know, in the constitution that we overwhelmingly passed in 2010, right? Mm -hmm. When it comes to the practical implication, when it comes to the practical application of the law, we are trying to find other avenues to explain why the failure has come in two. You know, we are even trying to say that, you see, we do not dictate of who you elect. Let me tell you, this is constitution, this is no, law. No, no, I damn. mean, if we really cannot be begin to bargain with what the law said, unless the only way we could see this is to amend that part and generally do away with the dictates of that chapter of 2000 no, 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 rule. No, no. Now, CJ Maraka said that the 10th parliament, mm -hmm. the 10th parliament, mm -hmm. did not have enough to enact the legislation required mm -hmm. To effect this two-third gender rule, mm. but now does this current parliament have the ability to do it? No, this car this current parliament is even uh, worse. Even when you look at the track record and you look at the Hansard and the quality of basic bills that are being passed, we are we are we are in trouble. I yeah. mean, I, I I would have wished that C J Maraga elaborated what are these specific criteria that he's talking about. Uh, Ram, going back to the issue of the two-thirds uh, gender rule. Uh, when you look at uh, 2010, when we enacted the new constitution, and 2013 we had the elections and we brought uh, forth the position of the 47 women rep. The 47 women rep was supposed to be a 20 year, for, it's only supposed to run for 20 years, after which it is believed the constitution mm -hmm. and uh, perhaps maybe if the two thirds gender rule would have passed, women would have been empowered enough, quote unquote, and now they could actually go for their big seats without any sort of protection but when you look at the women rep uh, themselves number one was it wasn't it but by implication was it wasn't it fair if this is affirmative action the same way we say we you can only be nominated once then the position of woman rep would have remained only for five years so i'm talking uh, the likes of sabina shege uh, woman rep uh, moranga who's now serving a second uh, tenor as woman rep would have only served one term and if, if that is empowerment, she should have been empowered enough to not decide, hey, I'm not going to be an MP in Maragua, I'm not going to be an MP in whatnot. But if you, you see uh, some women reps have reoccurred or have recurred, if this seat was supposed to have empowered women, was it supposed to be only one woman? Sabina would have been empowered after five years and then decided, uh, or the constitution would have given a caveat and said you can only be a woman rep for five years. As it is, the women rep will serve for continuously the 20 years. When will they ever vie for more positions? Mm -hmm. Now, no, uh, I, I agree uh, with her. Uh, uh, she's, uh, she's actually confirmed that we are having a parliament that is not able to enact yes. that. So, I mean, and I, I, this I, I, is I, I, the I, reason why it I, should I, be I, dissolved. No, I will, no, I will no, come no. to this, that. Yeah, mm -hmm. This is the reason that it should really mm -hmm. be dissolved. Justin Mutumi yeah. said that we must not, not, not lose sight of the real challenges in implementing the matter and turn parliament into a punching bag yes. on account of gender parity. Mm -hmm. uh, because according to Maraga, he said that the Supreme Court under the former CJ Willy Mutunga had directed parliament to enact the requisite legis the legislation by August 27, and they failed. 2015. And they mm -hmm. failed. And they failed. Yes. But now looking at the current, number one, are we turning parliament into a punching bag on, unreal on uh, unrealistic claims? And what are the circumstances that can make parliament to be dissolved? S -s Speaking uh, you know, this, uh, no, saying no, it as it is. No, 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 yeah, saying that it is. The way I'm looking at it, uh, this specific issue, parliament is being used as a punching bag. Why? My, my, and, I, and I referred specifically to the Senate during the division of revenue bill. I mean, we had all the time, we gave them one, two, three, nine times until the president intervened, gave 50 billion more. We even had uh, the committee, the committee that uh, you're yes. saying lacked for the two thirds. We had a committee that disagreed, I think, once or twice and finally came to an understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me, the only reason, and in this country where parliament is, is, should, 
and can ever be dissolved is when we are about to run for a general election. And in this circumstance, if we dissolve parliament, we are likely to head over to an election. And, 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 you know, an you know, election, uh, and an IDC that is not properly constituted, a judiciary that itself is yes. not properly constituted in case... Uh, please. Done. I, 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 please. I, 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 I totally, I, I will still come back to say that the functions of the National Assembly, mm -hmm. you know, um, practically, they have not lived up to tax, and that's why we're here. And you see, by the speaker and you want to, to add a more people. blame to, to a custom blame to the uh, you know the head of judiciary mm. for the failure of the national assembly i think is neither here or there the reason as to why we really need to quickly dissolve the national assembly is by the fact that there are other bills and the other laws that are still not enacted and because they have failed deliberately to enact those laws for political expediency. Now, again, I, would, you know, I, I really want to sit here and say that matters of the law must not be confused by political convenience. You know, there were a number of times, there were a number of attempts that had been made at the same National Assembly to save Kenyans on the two-thirds gender issue. All right. That I'll was not acted upon. Now, I, I want us now to whether it's a punching box or not, uh. whether it's a punching box or not, I will repeat mm. that the functions of the National Assembly are well articulated but we in the Constitution. Are we you understand? A punching bag? Why would it be a punching bag? Because Is it? You know, for me, I am not seeing it's a punching, but it's a failed institution. Uh, it has failed. It's a, it's a branch of the government that has failed to enact its laws Ram. and is plunging us to a constitutional Ram. crisis that this we is have. The same, uh, this is the same National Assembly that you're saying is incompetent, has been unable to add uh, to pass bills. You want to add more people, more women to an already incompetent National Assembly. On top of that, we are, do we are here today, 20, 2020, under COVID restrictions. What, what, like what exactly are you talking so about? In, in other words, you're saying that it doesn't make sense to even instill the two-third gender rule in a, in, a, in a national assembly that is not functional. Yes. So, so then what is the fate, what is the meaning of having the national Kenyans, assembly? You know, I really want Kenyans, to ask Kenyans Anita. Kenyans must deal with their issues and wait 2022. And All right. Now, this, uh, remember to give us your take even as you continue <laughs> with this conversation. The hashtag is the stand ke at Ram Aguko at Y254 channel. Hustlers and dynasties. What are your thoughts about this? Uh, Honorable Rilo Diga spoke in Kisumu. He said this, and I quote, The kind of talk is aimed at inciting Kenyans against one group and does not augur well in the eyes of the Building Bridges Initiative, which is seeking to reunite all Kenyans divided along ethnic and uh, party affiliations. When I look at, um, when I look at it, uh, what comes to my mind when I look at the hustlers and uh, dynasty, mm. um, I'm a student of history and I must go back to the history. And I look at the uh, propagator, that is uh, Ruto, and I also look at Raila in the specific context under which uh, the, the past is being brought into focus. When you look at it, uh, when you look at uh, former President Moi, may God rest his soul in peace. When you look at uh, how he handled even the two gentlemen, Ruto, 1992, he was his right-hand manager through the YK92. At the same time, Odinga, the child of uh, dynasty, was suffering uh, Im uh, unlawful Im imprisonment, uh, being away from his family. So my perspective when I look at it, I think it's just uh, fallacious and a term meant to divide Kenyans or rather provide some sort of uh, confusion on how things are run. For me, where I look at it, um, it's fallacious because even Dan or Ram, when, when you make it to Kiyomoka, eh? <laughs> no, your children will go to private school. They will live well off. <laughs> to make it. Oh, okay. okay. Now, now, I, 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 I okay, fine. Yeah, but but when you make it, you provide particular platforms for your children to make it in life. But it is not every child who will make it in life. Raila fought for his space in Kenyan politics. He has other siblings. Uh, Obura, Obura, Odinga, he has other siblings. But when do we talk about Raila? Raila sweat, uh, uh, he sweat for this country, blood, sweat, and tears. That is debatable had, anyway. Um, yeah. No, that's not debatable. <laughs> he had his space in the. In, in, Finish in, your point in, before I come to sure. that. Sure. Yes. 
he fought for his space so, so to nearly discount a, a person b uh, based on his personality i should not be able mm. to judge ram mm. or judge you because you come from a rich family i should judge you by what you bring to the table today i can only judge you by the content that you produced on this show Agreed. not where you've come from what you ate for breakfast so for me tying um, leadership on the basis of uh, uh, a personality or a previous background is really fallacious i think people should be judged by what they bring to the table the table all right yes. Hada, do, you know do, do you yeah. agree that should you be judged yeah. by what partly by, by content yeah, exactly exactly you know in, in leadership i think what you're bringing uh to help the people that you know elected you now you know i i, I begin by uh, you know uh, understand i said you know there are terms here that have been used in the current political scene and uh, i think hustler is one of them and the, the, I, I think i i had earlier said exactly what a hustler looks like and um, uh, you know giving it to being realistic with with honorable william ruto i think he's playing his political card so well and is identifying uh, with with the, with the term hustler mm. and and for his own political convenience the debates feel that you know people are looking at him and asking are you a representation of the hustler nation and, 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 and that's a and, question yes when, and, when and, and 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 for for the dynasty I also say the term dynasty basically is is is, is a fellowship you know, it is a family that is taking you know mm -hmm. a, a country to captive and yeah. making rule for a long period of time now ram you know let, let me say this we are post covid and as a nation mm -hmm. what we are looking for to be treated towards is a post covid recovery strategy I would question any political project that is brought forth right now with a lot of, you know, uh, suspicion. Any call for a referendum right now is unnecessary. And I've been saying that for a long period of time. Any premature political campaigns right now is posting Kenyans to a situation where there will be a double tragedy. You know, no. Kenyans are looking towards, you know, having all these that the country has gone through, ideally, the only thing that you could tell Kenya right now is how then are you recovering your business? How are you putting food on the table? But any other being, you know, political maneuvers, I think it's for ill-advised right now. Speaking of being ill-advised, Honda Morel Odinga said that the dynasty tag was meant to incite Kenyans against a section of the national leadership and meant to hoodwink Kenyans to take political sides. Now, do you, what is your stand in regards to this? Is a branding oneself a hustler or one belonging to a dynasty dividing Kenyans? I don't think so. In fact, I think it's a better alternative than someone who identifies a, a tribal aspect. You know that yeah. Kenya, we have had a history of tribal clashes, tribal issues. We had mm -hmm. the two, 2007 post-election violence. For me, I feel like this is more of a soft landing, whether it is true or not, mm. in terms of the context of uh, the, uh, the uh, hustler dynasty kind of thing is a thing for debate. But if it will take us it, it will take us to have a detour and not remember that this one comes from the right side of the lake or this one comes from the rift valley or this one comes from i think for me it's a it better, doesn't matter in terms of ideology it's better because I, i'd rather fight uh, capitalism communism than now actually fight in terms of ethnic uh, progression honorable luto said this and i quote now that they have agreed kenya is a hustler nation we want to tell them to give priority to, to uh, priority to job creation and business opportunities to the hustlers so that they can also take their children to school and afford decent housing. Coming to you, Dan, what's your stand on in regards to Honda Boruto? Looking at his perspective and how he's approaching the matter, he is speaking to the unemployed. Looking at that as a tactic, is it a positive deal for Honda Bulut? Uh, definitely. And, and I think we are confirming here that as opposed to, you know, inciting tribal, uh, you know, uh, going through tribal conclaves. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know we are just forgetting some a week or less than a week ago we had uh, you know Kapsaret member of parliament had mm. made very very insensitive statements and uh, um, you know uh, the member the John Ngeno I think and and I think they had to answer to the charges of incitement yes. so I would rather and I agree with Anita I would rather like you know coin a political narrative that rally people behind an ideology you know the the, the debate is whether it is factual or not but at least 
you are not you know inciting political you know hatred or uh, you know ethnic animosity but there is there's another interesting term of this that you know the hustler uh, the leader of the hustler movement uh, you know the has mastered nation. you know the art of donation of wheelbarrows and and you know and uh, washing machines and you know and being philanthropic enough with the churches and construction of religious institution i am giving him a thumbs up for that because he is actually doing what other people who are blaming him for doing that are not doing so, so, so I think mine is to affirm that if that is the best way Hustler Nation would go to into, then it, it's correct. It's building churches, is empowering young people, it, you know, is improving the lifestyle of those who are living in the slums. Mm -hmm. And I keep on asking again, the question is whether which side of the coin are you seeing it, whether it's legit or not. But something is happening as opposed to you sitting down and blaming somebody who is reaching out to, you know, to the impoverished with the mm -hmm. little he has. So in your view, someone saying that we are in the Hustler Nation doesn't divide Kenyans. It's a positive thing. I think that is that is positivity. It's political right. communication. That is that is positivity. Mm -hmm. Let me come to you, Anita. Honorable Rella said this. Founding father Jomo Kenyatta was um, um, uh, a meter reader. The late Daniel Moy was from a humble beginnings as a teacher who rose to become the second president. Mwai Kibaki was also the son of a peasant who rose to become the fourth president. Jaramogi Oginga Odinga was also from a peasant father and became the first vice president. Mm -hmm. In other words, what Honorable Odinga is saying that former presidents in this country were also all from poor backgrounds. Mm. So what makes Honorable Ruto different? I think for me it's more of uh, some sort of uh, branding and there is nothing wrong with bra you can brand yourself whatever you want mm -hmm. nothing makes Ruto wrong he's actually when you read that uh, the rejoinder there was a rejoinder by Senator Murkomen yes. Murkomen where he says yeah it's okay if the first president was Hustler second president third president uh, then automatically then the fifth president should come from the uh, Hustler nation and when you look at track records of uh, performance uh, you look at performance indicators of from the first president to currently where we are mm. I mean you would see uh, without being biased and uh, trying to be objective as possible you will see that this is the lowest we've gone in terms of delivery but as much as Ruto is trying to give this Hustler dynasty perspective what he misses is that he is part of this regime which has a dynasty person in charge so there is a uh, the, uh, honorable president as the dynasty and there is you the hustler then what is going wrong because this current uh, crop of presidency um, the current i think eight years now seven to eight years now yeah. has been the worst performing if you look at public debt we are doing very badly so for me i, I would say that as much as it's bringing the, the narrative then the question is why is the economy doing as it is doing why do we have this big public okay. debt yet you are elected as a unit now uh, I, would, I would like us to sample uh, feedback from people so many uh, tweets coming in uh, messages i don't know if you'll be able to find time to read uh, all of them but let me start with uh, all right the first one coming up is by Karl Marx again <laughs> on hustler clearly it is drama divert the attention to divert the attention of people it's a distraction nothing will work all right let me let, let's pull up a few more uh, a few more tweets coming up on your screen my director which one do we start with mm -hmm. all right so we have uh, that is uh, coming up on your screen which one do we start with uh, director uh -huh. we have at uh, Kui really saying i feel that it's time we implement the constitution page by page exactly. the, legis <laughs> the, the legislature has to make laws are in line with the constitution for 10 years now we have the best constitution in the region but enacting the laws in it has been a very difficult all right do you believe it's so that in, we have the best constitution but mm, we do, uh, we do. Uh, is a yes. exactly right. mm -hmm. but one bill cannot supersede the others 
or like the gender. The two-thirds gender. But, 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 you, <laughs> but, but you know, and I would um, say uh, now parliament, parliament has to continue with its work. Well, of right. course, we also cannot cherry pick certain <laughs> sections of the constitution and leave out the rest. I mean, it should but be. We must all right. the uh, you know, um, let's big. Let's <laughs> let's about the next tweet <laughs> coming up on your screen. <laughs> Remember the hashtag is uh, the stand ke. <laughs> all right, uh, the empower empowerment is. Uh, uh, needed national wide national wide to ensure the citizens understand that what the two third general rule means to ensure that women also understand that they need to vie for political space and also ensure that we do, don't nominate just for the sake of it exactly. right. we don't need women to be just nominated flower girls for the sake. no flower girls you are calling them flower girls yes next to it coming up uh-huh that is uh, uh, coming up on your screen in a bit. Uh -huh. So we have um, one at, uh, uh -huh. which one is that? All right, so this is uh, one saying, Anita keeps on saying that CJ Maraga has only two months to leave office. My worry is the 2010 constitution will not end with Maraga. It is here to stay. So the uh, parliament failed to implement it, and these are the consequences. Let's swallow it as bitter as it is. Mm -hmm. Your response. That was directly to you, Anita. Uh, from the way I'm looking at it, uh, mm. let uh, Maraga go. Let Maraga go. And uh, we shall know how to handle uh, the two-thirds gender law with, uh, with other laws depending on the priority for me today the priority is the ibc to ensure that the ibc is properly constituted because if we are in such a hurry to let go of uh, parliament we have a couple of by-elections coming up i'm sure you've seen the circular mm -hmm. how are we doing it with an with an ibc that mm -hmm. is improperly All constituted right. there All are right. priorities you have a take on that Dan? yeah definitely i think he is right by mentioning that you know positions okay. come and go and what hold on is the constitution You've also read the, you know, the genesis of how this thing has been, that it was even dealt with, with the last Chief Justice, it failed to take effect. All right. This Chief Justice is also leaving it failed to take effect. Mm. So the next one, probability, mm. that is also the same, we'll have another Chief Justice without this you know, law being enacted. All the right. thing is, dissolve the parliament, converse it widely, have a solution, so that we do not come back to it. Yeah. Dan, I'll give you a little secret. Yeah. The next CJ might be a woman, and things will be different. Definitely. I, I, I love what you said. Yes. You, you, you have predicted that the next she, uh, uh, she, CJ, CJ <laughs> who will be a woman. Yes. You know, in, in any case, in any case, we have a constitution. Time will, time will tell. Yeah, we have a constitution that, let's say regardless of the gender, regardless of the gender, the, 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 the stand, yeah. hey, hey, I think Canada is live to the reality that the parliament has failed Kenyans. I guess maybe what she should be telling us is uh, then do away with the two th with the two third gender rule. But laws are laws. It doesn't matter exactly. the timing of the advisory. Exactly. Sure. I have not yes. said we do away with the two third gender rule. What? I am saying there are matters that what? have priority. One, one more tweet at Oscar John and some I agree with Anita's argument because we cannot give seats for elective positions for people based on gender. The gender rule has uh, has uh, uh, has not gone wrong from the start because of if the electorate does not vote for female, female candidates we cannot vote we cannot force it down their throats all right keep tweeting at ramaguko at y254 channel the hashtag is uh, uh, the stand ke La lady and gentlemen thank you very much for your time pleasure thank you it has been a pleasure having you on board now that brings us to the end of this evening conversation tonight. It has been a pleasure having you. So many tweets coming in. We cannot be able to read all of them, but we appreciate your feedback. See you again next week. Same place, same time on Tuesday at 8 p.m. This is The Stand. My name is Ram Aguko. God bless you. God bless the work of your hands.